Good morning, sisters, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is um, is Friday, the the twentieth of May. Uh, today, in the church, we are remembering Alquin, Alquin, Deacon Abbot. In fact, let me let me read a little bit of Alquin's um, biography. Alquin was born of noble parentage about 735, probably in or near York. He was educated at York Cathedral School by Albert, a former pupil of Bede. Alquin, a highly able pupil, soon attracted the special attention of Albert, who took his pupil on several trips to the continent. When in 767 Albert became Archbishop of York, Alcuin, who had been ordained deacon, succeeded him as master of the school, work he continued for the next 15 years, attracting numerous students and enriching the already valuable library. In common with many effective teachers, it was Alquin's gift to be able to inspire those he taught with his own enthusiasm for learning. Not surprisingly, the school attracted talented students from far and wide. Returning from a visit to Rome in 781, he met Charlemagne, then King of the Franks, who persuaded Alquin to reloc relocate to his court in Aachen, as master of the palace school, in effect, his minister of education. Alcuin was responsible for the process of establishing a primary school in every town and village, and because the clergy would be the teachers in ensuring higher standards of literacy and education amongst both parish priests and ordinance. He established uh, scriptoria for the copying and preservation of ancient manuscripts, thus preserving the writings of many classical authors that might otherwise have been lost. He is also credited with inventing cursive script, or joined up writing, as an aid to speedier copying. To Alquin belongs much of the credit for the revision and organization of the Latin liturgy the preservation of many of the ancient prayers, and the development of plain chant. He wrote nine biblical commentaries and was responsible for a revision of the Latin Bible, the Vulgate. He was a foremost opponent of the adoptionist heresy and an advocate of the doctrine of the joint procession of the Holy Spirit from the Father and the Son. Though the widespread acceptance of the doctrine by the Western Church only hastened the split with the Eastern Church. In 796, when Alcuin was over 60 and anxious to retire from public life, Charlemagne appointed him abbot of St. Martin's of Tours. At some point in his busy life, he had probably entered the Benedictine order. Here, in his declining years, he built up a model monastic school as he had previously done at York and Aiken. He died in May 804. And that's Alquin. He's a deacon and, um, and, of course, a champion of education in the church, in the early days of the church. All right, that's, that's great. Uh, I just needed, and we have, a, of course, we have a collect for Alquin this morning. Just a second. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made, 
and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you led the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O oh Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O oh Lord, you led the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O oh Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you led the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? All right, let's uh, recollect. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and the collect for Alquin, Alquin of York. God of wisdom, eternal light, who shone in the heart of your servant Alquin, revealing to him your power and, mit and pity, scatter the darkness of our ignorance, that with all our heart and mind and strength, we may seek your face, and be brought with all your saints to your holy presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 138. Psalm 138. <clears throat> I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. 
you greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> All right, so let me read the meditation. <clears throat> this is a Psalm of David. Great is the Lord, great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly. For the haughty, he knows from afar. Where is God's glory seen? In his greatness, to be sure. His omnipotence, his infinitude, his eternality. Even more, however, the glory of God is seen in his goodness in light of that greatness. In, in all his immensity, God delights to shower his wayward creatures with grace upon grace. God is not gloriously, God is not glorious merely because he's great, although he is, but because in that great immensity, he is, he is also merciful when he has every reason to turn the shoulder and vaporize us. In a letter to a woman whose son had died, Jonathan Edwards wrote, Especially are the beams of Christ's glory infinitely softened and sweetened by his love to men, the love that passes knowledge. The glory of his person consists preeminently in that infinite goodness and grace of which he made so wonderful a manifestation in his love to us. The great French reformer John Calvin agreed, There is no honouring of God unless his mercy be acknowledged, upon which alone it is founded and established. Do you want to glorify God? Here is one major way to do it. Let him love you. Let him shower you with his love. Receive his grace. Drink it down without adding one drop of your own goodness to it. Your very purpose in life and eternity is to be the praise of God's glorious grace. In Ephesians 1 verse 6. And this psalm is a reflection of that. Amen. Verse 7, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hands against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. Amen. Our New Testament reading this morning is uh, Luke chapter 6. One, verse 1 to 6. 1 to 11. Luke chapter 6, verse 1 to 11. Luke chapter 6, verse 1 to 11. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the cornfields and his disciples began to pick some corn, some ears of corn, rub them in their hands, and, and eat the grain. 
some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and taking the consecrated bread, he ate what is lawful only for priests to eat. He also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he went into the synagogue and he was teaching. And a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the man with the shriveled hand, Get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. And Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? He looked, round at the, he looked round at them all and then said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were furious and began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. <clears throat> okay. All right, so here we have Jesus breaking the rules again, as he seemed to do. do. <laughs> of course, Jesus wasn't a rule breaker for the sake of rule breaking. He, break certain, he broke certain rules because these rules get in the way of helping people. Jesus was more concerned about helping people than about keeping religious rules. And sisters and brothers, if it's one thing Jesus has taught us, <laughs> not only in his example, in his miracles and in his teachings, is that, the, that people are more important than programs and rules and regulations and principles. People are more important. And so they, 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 if your disciples are hungry, breaking the rule in order to eat is more important than keeping the rule and starving. <laughs> if somebody needs healing, somebody needs um, uh, help, breaking the rules in order to help that person is more important than keeping rules. Um, you know, I, and of course, it, it, if you do that, sisters and brothers, in, in, in cultures and societies, you can get in trouble. You might get killed. <laughs> because Jesus did. Jesus got in trouble for breaking the rules. And, um, and, and, and if we follow Jesus, we might get in trouble too. Uh, because what matters... And, and this is the fundamental thing, sisters and brothers. What matters is that we help people, that we put people first in our, in our lives, in our, in our dealings, in, our, in, our, in, in, in how we live, our, our live out our faith, is that people are more important. Uh, and so Jesus, in teaching this, uh, I mean, he shows, he said, David... David did this. David, when he was hungry, went in the temple and ate the bread, the bread of the presence, which was only the, um, the, 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 the priest only had the, uh, is the only one who had the right to eat the bread of the presence. And yet David did. And Jesus is approving of this. Jesus said David did, and it's okay. Why? Because he was hungry. And his men were hungry. And, you know, he broke the rules. And, you know, in the Old Testament, David could have been dropped, you know, could have dropped dead by doing that. But God was to show that God cared more about the person than about the, 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 the principles or the, the rules. 
um, Jesus is approving of what David did. And so here, that, that, is, that is the point of Jesus here. So that is a lesson for us, sisters and brothers. People are more important. And we are to seek to help people more than we seek to follow rules and regulations. Let's pray. Our Father, we are grateful for your goodness and mercy this new day. We thank you, O oh God, for bringing us to the beginning, to this, to this day. Lord, it's a day we have never seen before and we shall never see again. And so we need your help today. We need, we need the help of your Holy Spirit to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our lo and the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we, we are weak, but you are strong. And so, Lord, help us today, we pray, to grow more in, in the likeness of Christ, in our attitude, in our words, in our conversations, in our lives. Help us, Lord, to, uh, to, to overcome all the temptations of the enemy today in your power, in your might, and in your power. Lord, help us not to seek to do this in our might. We pray, forgive us. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for when we, when we seek to live according to our own standards, we pray that you will live through us today, a new day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we pray. We want to pray for those that are on our, on our prayer list this morning. And we remember, we, let's remember the, all those who are suffering. We want to remember the people of Ukraine. We pray that the Lord will have mercy on them in their distress. We pray for our own community. We pray for the church. We pray that God will strengthen his church. The church locally, our church, the local community, but also the worldwide church. The witness of, of Christ in the church. We pray that God will help us to, rem to be the salt and the light that he has called us to be in, the, in, in our community in our locality and in our world. And so, Lord, bless your people, your church, wherever we are, may we reflect Christ, the light of Christ, in our, in our own community and in this world. May we shine with the light of Jesus Christ. May we be that salt, the preserving salt, in a world that has gone bad. Give your church the grace to be the salt and the light, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the Lord, we remember all those that are on our hearts today. We think of um, Glynis and Bob in, in Upminster. Pray for Deborah and Jean and Hannah, Comfort in Crystal and Wendy and Dion and Keog and Rona and Pat and Ray. Maxine and Mokund and Joanna. We pray also for Daisy and Sue and Jane and Andrew and Keith, the Lindsay family. Pray for Ryan in America, for Thelma, for Muriel, for David and Bernard. Also pray for Dolly today as she goes to the hospital. I pray that the Lord will be with her. Lord, I pray that you'll uh, you, you'll comfort our sister Dolly as she goes in today. We pray that you will be there with her. Give her your peace. Give her your support today, Lord, the comfort that comes from the presence of your Holy Spirit. We pray that you'll be with our sister Dolly as she goes into the hospital this afternoon. We pray also for Veronica and Chester and Nadine, for Pauline, Roy, and the family as they prepare for the farewell service of Pauline's brother. We also want to remember our sister Doreen, Andy, Maxine, Tavan, Dor that's Dorothea's friend, 
and um, Selima and Selby. We also remember um, Jean and Walter and Monica and Auntie Jane. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And um, let's say St. Patrick's Prayer before we finish this morning. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord guide you. May the Lord give you his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers, in all that you do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers.